What's up, Crossroads family? <laughs> My name is Walter. I'm an elder at Crossroads Church. If you didn't know me, well, now you do. And we are in day nine of our fast and praying. And I hope that you've been staying in strong. You haven't been giving in to the things that you have given up for the Lord and replacing it with prayer and fasting. And I pray that you've been seeing some incredible changes. Uh, we're all in this together. And I just want to let you know that uh, if you haven't yet picked up your 21 prayer book, it is in the lobby and it is there for you to get it. Uh, I know they're asking for $5 or whatever, but don't let that get in the way of you going out there and grabbing this book. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, like this is the first time I'm hearing about this or Maybe I heard about it a couple times, just for keep forgetting to go and make that move. It's never too late. It's never too late. You can never be late for God when it comes to fasting and learning how to fast and pray. And this book is so rich and we're in day nine of this fast. Before I get into this book a little bit, I want you to take a look at this glass. And I want you to think to yourself, what do you see? when you see this glass, all right? So day nine of this book, uh, I'm only gonna read the first portions of it to you because it's so good and it's about prayer being our weapon. You know, God gives us so many great tools and prayer has gotta be the biggest one of them all. Maybe not the biggest, but it's definitely up there. And prayer allows us to connect to God in an intimate way. We've been talking about how to pray and, and why prayer is so intimate and the importance of prayer and, and how prayer interacts with our lives. And now we can talk about how prayer is a weapon. Uh, there's a quote here by E.M. Bounds that says, prayer is our most formidable weapon, but the one in which we are least skilled Ouch, the most adverse use it. That's kind of crazy. That kind of stings a little bit, you know, because prayer should be our number one weapon, yet he's kind of right. It's like prayer really isn't our first go-to weapon. And so there's a, a verse that follows it, 2 Corinthians 10, four through five, that I, I hope encourages you and tells you more about the power of prayer. Okay, the weapons of our warfare are not natural, man-made or carnal, but divine weapons for the pulling down of strongholds. And we use these weapons against anything lifted up against the name of God. And we bring every negative thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And we bring every negative thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Wow. The two highlighted things here were pulling down a strongholds and taking negative thoughts captive. You know, usually our biggest stronghold is fear. A lot of times fear sucks the life out of us because we don't think that our prayers have enough strength to be able to overcome the strongholds in our lives. And that could be furthest from the truth. And God's word says in Corinthians, he says, take those negative thoughts captive, right? And just toss them out of here. Get rid of them because they're not helping you. They're hurting you. It's just like this glass, right? Here with the glass half full or half empty or however you described it, you have a glass of water where your prayer life is much like this glass. It's only halfway because you do everything like you normally do. Like, oh, I pray for uh, my dinner and, you know, I pray before I go to bed. And, you know, other times you pray out of desperation because every single thing you tried to do failed. And your last resort is prayer. And the whole time, the Holy Spirit's been right here saying, if you would only not fear, but just have faith. You see, when fear overtakes your faith, you end up with your glass half full and your power to pray is reduced. 
But when you replace your fears and your worries and your anxieties and all those strongholds that hold you back, then the Holy Spirit comes in with your prayers and he fills you up and he takes you to new levels, supernatural levels, levels that overflow with his grace, his mercy, his love, his everything that he has to offer you. Powerful prayers are life-changing, but you gotta be willing to fill your cup over the rim. You gotta do your part to seek these powerful prayers out. And it starts with choosing faith over fear. I wanna read to you Mark 11, 24, which says, therefore, I tell you, what you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Friends, this is believing that you have received it and God promises you that it will be yours. How will it be yours? You know, there's not much power in prayers like this unless you're willing to fully commit to these powerful prayers of submitting yourselves to the Lord and clearing everything out of your camp. And usually that's what it starts. It starts on the inside. And it reminds me of a story of Joshua. Joshua was chosen by God to serve the nation of Israel as their leader. He chose him. He chose him because Joshua had great strength, great courage. His glass was always full. And every time that they went into battle, when they stepped into the new land, they won. And word was getting around frantically like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? The Israelites, they're so strong, something about them. You know, we need to do something to overcome them. And every single time, Joshua just pounding, pounding, and pounding, and he would annihilate big cities. And then they came to the city of Jericho. And you know the story. They marched around that city wall for seven days. They did exactly what the Lord told them. And every time that they went into battle, God always said, fear not. You see, fear should not have a place in our prayer life because when it does, we kind of fall. In Israel, they met that fall. After they've conquered Jericho, uh, they fell because they took some of the spoils that they weren't supposed to. And so as they were moving on to a battle, a big battle called Ai, Joshua was pumped, he was ready, but the Lord was gravely ang angered. I wanna share with you in Joshua chapter seven, it says, but the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things, all the gold, all the silver and everything, for Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zebedee, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, and took some of the devoted things, and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. It burned. You see, they did something that they weren't supposed to do. You're thinking, well, okay, uh, so what does that got to do with fear over faith? and faith over fear. Well, if they had faith that God's provision would take care of them, they wouldn't have stolen those things. They would have always known that they could be carried by God and his provision and his grace and his mercy. But because they didn't and they got greedy, they stole and they hid it and they lied about it. And when Joshua sent 3,000 men to the hilltop of Ai to go ahead and start knocking that battle out, they actually turned those men away and 36 men died. And Joshua goes before the Lord and the Ark of the Covenant. And he says, God, why are you coming against me? Like, what's going on? Why did you send us to this place if you were just going to destroy us? And the Lord responded to him and he said, you know, my anger burns against your people because they took devoted things. They didn't have faith in me and what I could do for them. And so your power is reduced. You see, when you need God to give you a breakthrough over the strongholds in your life, 
you've got to release all the sin in the camp. You've got to release all the fear in your heart, all the worry, all everything that comes against God. You've got to get rid of it and start receiving all of him so he could fill your cup. He can overflow your prayers with blessings, with overcoming power, with, with the kind of sound mind and control over anything and everything in your life. But you gotta be willing to submit yourself to his word. And his word is true. His bond is something you can trust. You don't have to worry about God failing you, more so you failing yourself if you just don't abide in him as he longs to abide in you. And so my encouragement to you today is, is to fill your cup, to replace your fears for faith and let that cup rise. Let the Lord fill you with his spirit that is already with you, ready to go, ready to give you power, ready to give you the love and a sound mind to be able to tackle anything and everything that comes against the Lord and comes against you because you are his children. So how do we do that? Well, number one, we gotta change our perspective, okay? We can't keep looking at our glasses half full and thinking it's okay to live and give fear a place in our lives. Just like Joshua, he had to respond to this issue. And so when the Lord told him, said, look, <laughs> there's somebody in your camp that did wrong and uh, you need to fix it. Otherwise, you're gonna lose every single battle, you know? My anger is just gonna continue to burn. And sure enough, Joshua was like, all right, let's go in fix mode. And he went, he fixed it. He went and he found Achan and he confronted him. And when he confronted him, he told him, don't lie to me. Just tell me the truth. What happened? And Achan came clean. And that day they stoned Achan. They stoned his whole family, his dog. I mean, everything. And they put everything back where it was supposed to be. And after that, they dominated Ai. And they continued to dominate every single heathen king that came against the Lord. See, your prayers are powerful when they're in alignment with the Lord, which is number two. You know, your, your prayers need to be in alignment with God. We talked about how God will give you anything that you ask, but what he's talking about is it needs to be in alignment with his will. You are his child and you have to be about your kingdoms come. His kingdom needs to come and you are his servant. He came to serve you. You should come to serve him as well. And so he's here for you. He wants to give you all the power that you need to be successful in his name, not your name. When it's your name, the water goes down and fear invades. But when it's in his name, there's no room for fear only for success, only for being an overcomer, only for being able to overcome the impossible. God is in the impossible game. He's ready to make things possible in your life today if you just let him. Here's number two, or no, number three, sorry. Battle prayer, you gotta, you gotta battle with your prayers. The Lord says the tongue is like a double-edged sword, you know? Your tongue is like a double-edged sword when you use it correctly. And how do you use it correctly? You pull in scripture with prayer. You know, when you say, God, where there are two or three gathered in your name, you said you would bless this prayer. Watch God move. I've been in church praying over people for, gosh, 10 years. And I've seen God move radically when, when we would come together and exercise God's prayer and battle together. And he has done impossible things that man says could never happen, but he made it happen. And it's the testimonies that, that help keep that cup full and know that these powerful prayers are just resting in his presence, waiting to, to be spewed out of our mouths and our hearts and poured over a, a city and a, and a nation of darkness that desperately need him, that desperately need to seek his salvation and his help. But who would know 
to give it to them if we don't step out and start praying these powerful prayers over people. This generation needs us so badly more than ever. And it's up to you, it's up to me to allow God to pour our cup overflowing with strong, powerful prayers, praying over everybody's strongholds and everyone's fears and failures and eliminating them and replacing them with love and with power and of a sound mind. And you might be thinking, man, where's this love and this power and this sound mind coming from? It's 2 Timothy 1, 7. It says, God did not give you a spirit of fear. Okay, we did that. But he gave you a spirit of power. He gave you uh, love and he gave you a sound mind. I think those are the three ingredients that help throttle a powerful prayer into action and allow God to manifest among the people who need his healing, who need to be lifted up, who need to be encouraged, who need a breakthrough in their lives because they've tried everything that they possibly can and they can't overcome it, but they need something more divine, something more powerful, something more supernatural to come in and invade their lives and help them see who the one and true God is in their lives, amen? <laughs> so number four, if we're gonna do all three things really well, right? If we're gonna love God well uh, and love others well, if we're going to speak powerful prayers by using his word and aligning our words with his word and speaking it over our circumstances, our situations and our strongholds, if we're going to have a sound mind, change our perspective and our mindset that our cup isn't half full or half empty, it's overflowing. We've got to do these things really well. Number one, we got to get into God's word. You can't understand how to overcome these fears, how to overcome your failures, how to isolate all these distractions that get in the way of a powerful prayer if you don't get into his word and see what it says to you and start letting it marinate into your heart and letting it speak out of your mouth and using it against the enemy. Paul said it best. He said, we're not waged against a war of flesh and blood, but of principalities. What does that mean? That means that there are things in a supernatural world, demons, I mean, evil, that is fighting a battle over your life, over your neighbor's life, over your friend's lives, over your enemy's lives, to try to take them away from God. And we can't let that happen. And we need to get into his word and start learning how we can be ambassadors of it and how we can start praying powerful prayers by using scripture against the enemy, amen? And so number two, practice, practice, practice. I can't tell you how many times I hear people say, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to pray. You know, I, I don't, please don't call on me, you know? But how will you ever cultivate a healthy, thriving, growing, powerful prayer life. If you don't practice, you have to put yourself out there, get vulnerable and practice. Practice with God every day, not when you're supposed to, not because you're desperately needing God to come through for you, but because there are things that you could be praying for on the regular, even when life is good, that's still a great time to practice. No matter the season, practice, practice, practice. Get with other believers and practice. Number three, pray consistently and without ceasing. You know, just because you pray for a prayer and you don't see God moving, it doesn't mean that he's not moving. It doesn't mean that he didn't answer your prayer. What it means is keep praying because he wants to see how desperate you are for him to fill your cup and overflow it and let the power be released in your situation, your circumstances, and those strongholds. But you can't do that unless you keep praying. You gotta draw your prayer circle and say, God, I'm not getting out of this prayer circle until you move. I want you to move in my life. I want you to move in my mom's life, my dad's life, my cousin's life, my friend's life, my coworker's life whoever it is, 
You need to demand through prayer and petition that God move in your situation, your circumstances, and your strongholds. And he will hear you. And it's just like our verse said in Mark, he will hear those prayers and he will bless them. When? I don't know. But don't give up. Keep praying. Here's number four. Pray with an attitude of desperation. I just I just showed you. Pray with an attitude of desperation. Don't go in there saying, okay, God, here we are again. And uh, I just, I don't know. You know, help. You know, that is so lame. You know, and you know it. I know it. Pray with an attitude of desperation as if your life depends on it. As if somebody else's life that you really care about depends on it. Because it does. We're coming to the end times right now. Uh, our culture has been crazier than ever. I've asked people from decades back, you know, have you ever seen anything as crazy as what we've been experiencing in the world? And they said, no, this is, this is by far way worse. And you know what? We don't run away from the craziness. God needs us to pray through the craziness. He needs us to cover all that mess with prayer because it's part of his coming. It's just another chapter in the book that leads up to the end where one day he's gonna call for us to come to him and meet him in the clouds. And that'll be a glorious day. But until then, we've gotta pray powerful prayers. We've got to expand God's kingdom. That's what we were called to do, regardless if you're a pharmacist, a doctor, a janitor, a bus driver, a truck driver. It doesn't matter what occupation you are. Your occupation is your mission field. And if you pray at a desperation and with an attitude of victory, God is going to see that and he's going to come in alignment with you because you're incorporating his word and all these things because he sees the power and the love and the control that you have, the sound mind that uh, Timothy talks about. And he knows, man, they really care about me and I really love them and I wanna come in alignment and I want to help these people. I want to help them, they are mine. Number five, pray with others. You know, this could be a stretch for some people because maybe you've never prayed with other people. But you know, it's just like I said, whether there are two or more gathered in his name, there he is among them. God's word also says that two are better than one. Throughout God's entire word, he encourages corporate prayer. This next Wednesday, you have an opportunity to come to Crossroads Church at seven o'clock and pray corporately with your brothers and sisters. We can pray for God's, you know, release of the bounds against any kind of strongholds in anyone's lives, whether if you need it or if somebody else in your life needs it or somebody who may not want to come needs it. Invite somebody, bring them along, and let's, 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 see, let's see the power of the Holy Spirit just infiltrate this building Wednesday night and see his power just bring us to a new level of prayer, using prayer as our weapon. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for, for everyone watching. Lord, they're, they're watching for a reason. And I pray that whatever word that you laid on their hearts, whatever revelations that you have given them, God, I pray that you lift them up. I pray that you help them to understand that they have a purpose and you have a goal. That they have an inheritance to protect and that their mission field is, is plentiful and in need of powerful prayers. And Father God, I pray that you allow them to come into your presence with thanksgiving, with love, with an attitude of desperation, with biblical alignment, 
with a sound mind, with a burden on their heart to make a difference in your name. Lord, I pray that if anyone is, is struggling because their glass is half full, or if it's half empty. I pray that they erase all the fears and the worries and the anxieties. God, your word says to exchange them and turn them into prayer. That their faith be made stronger and that their cup overflows with your spirit, God. And that they can step into their prayer circle, Father and speak bold, powerful prayers against an evil nation, God, that desperately needs you, against the strongholds, God, that hold them back, whether it's pornography, whether it's alcoholism, God, whether it's even overeating and food, whatever it is, God, whatever stronghold divides them from you and comes against you, God, we pray in your name, Jesus, we rebuke it in your name and we ask for your blood to be covered over it, Father, and that you will just revive them, God. We ask for revival, Father, and to fill their cup. Let it overflow all the days of their lives, that every prayer is a powerful prayer and that they will begin to see your power resonating inside of them because of you. Amen. Well, that's all our time today. I, I hope you stay strong. I hope that you've benefited so much from these powerful prayers. Uh, now take this weapon and start using it. Make a list, journal, write people's names down, write your own name down and invite that journal into your prayer circle and start speaking powerful prayers to your, you know, your situations, your circumstances, and your strongholds. You don't have to be a victim to them because God overcame them. And so you have victory waiting on you. So go ahead and step into your day, starting the day, and pray those powerful prayers. Love you, and we'll see you later. Bye.